Yeah. You okay, fatty man? Yeah? Hold on. Here, take your ball, okay? Dad, I do something right now. Here. I love you. Pet too. Alright. Bye bye. 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 Alright, what's going on, you guys? It's, go ahead. Go ahead, King. Bye bye. It's your boy Three Stacks in this thing, baby, representing Team Kings of Games. Today I'm going to be showcasing you guys Ultra Guys. Uh, Kingston, what's wrong, Papa? Okay, how about go over here, right right here, okay? Okay, thank you. Alright, so Ultra Guys, you guys, is actually a really fire deck. I think it's like the fastest trap deck of the format. I think it's faster than Eldritch. It could body Guru. Well, I feel like there's no trap, not even true Dracos. Like, none of their floodgates. Like, it's, it's just like it doesn't compare to the speed and pure aggression of a deck that's supposed to be a slow trap deck. Really, well, trap decks are supposed to be slow, but like Eldritch and Altergeist. And I feel like true Dracos to an extent because they get summoned like three times in a turn. Or like trap decks that kind of do not define the norm of a trap deck being like set five pass. Like, Ultra guys can actually combo off turn one, and I think this deck is really, really strong. Y'all show you guys in replays, but I feel like this deck has a really, really high ceiling. Uh, even when multi picker was at one, there's just consistency issues. But like the way that you use your cards with this deck, really like can dictate a, a good duel or a great duel. So like just playing this deck by itself, just by reading the cards and doing what they say, you're already gonna catch bodies. You're already gonna wax people, even if you just autopilot it. It's already that good. Like seriously. Like, literally, it puts up so many interrupts that if you just, like, you could be a shotgun player and just, like, use your interrupts on literally the first card you see, and it's like you're still going to deplete so much resources from your opponent just being trigger happy. That's without applying any level of skill. So, like, already, that doesn't even sound fair, but honestly, it kind of is not really, like... You know, it's not fair to that extent. But not to say that the deck does not require skill to pilot it effectively, because it actually does. It requires a lot of planning ahead, and you really have to be patient with your cards. You can't actually be true happy if you want to actually play competitive. I really said that statement just to show you guys that this deck is just, it's like Adam Emancipator, for example. Adam Emancipator, you could be really bad at the deck or the game, and you'll still win. And it's really not fair, but it's like, it's because the deck itself is so good. So, Ultra Guys is already a good deck before you even apply any level of skill. Skill. That's really what I want to say. That's what I should have led Kingston. off with instead of. Yes, Kingston. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go get your ball, Papa. Here, go get your ball. Watch out. Be careful. Be careful. All right. So yeah, I'm just gonna showcase you guys my list because uh, like this deck is really crazy. So as you guys, this as you guys can see, this is my list. Um, uh, there's certain cards that I don't play, but also there's certain cards that I do play that people don't play, or that they're not as popular. Yes, Kingston. Sorry, you guys. My son's trying to talk to me. Yes. Okay, hey, go bye-bye go for right now, okay? Go on the couch, Papa, okay? I'm going to come to you in a second. Get the ball. Go ahead. All right, so this is my list, you guys. So for hand traps, I run three nibs, three imperm, three ash. I'll just talk about the hand traps real quick. Oh, yes, Kingston. This kid will not give up, you guys. <laughs> Kingston, please, okay? Go, matter of fact, go to your room, okay? Go to your room for right now, okay? Go play with your toys. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Alright, so three nib, three ash, three imperm. I don't need to main any um Zexal lockouts because honestly, like I play a trap deck, and as you guys see, my traps are reactive, like strike, crackdown, compulse, lost win, imperm, etc. So I don't really care too much about the Zexal lock. I could just set my back rows and resolve multi faker on their turn. It doesn't matter. The only thing that Zexal does to this deck is it doesn't let you activate extravagance turn one and Kingston. Come on, man. Please. Hold on, you guys. I'm so sorry, man. If this affects quality, I'm sorry. My baby. Go your room, okay, Betty? Go, 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 go,
I want to say chain burn, but Ash and Emperor are always safe to main deck no matter what it is, Rogue or meta. And in Nib is kind of iffy, but the way the format's defined right now, every deck that you can nib that's actually tier one can play through it or around it, except Eldritch. Eldritch cannot play through or around nib consistently. You just nib them and then they play Eldritch after that. They lose the synchro portion, unless they're playing Zexalot. But still, I feel like Nib is just way too strong, and it does what this deck needs, it gives me a turn, because this deck is really aggressive. Like, you might think that you're safe by passing turn against Alter Guys. This is not like Sky Strikers, where you're like, with Sky Strikers, you could be like, I don't leave any any fire monsters in Grave, no Ash, nothing on foot for the Widow Anchor, and it's really hard for them to kill you, because they have to use their own cards, so that means like, they have to already have Ray, and then like normal a tuner, and then go into access code, and still have an extra like 3k body, or 2700 body to kill you. But with Alter Guys, you can think this deck is slow, and pass turn, and then that's it, you're done, it's over, like it's literally over, like, you get so much resources with this deck, this deck plus is really really hard, and this deck, when it gets nibiru you keep 5 or 6 cards in your hand, when you do play into Nibiru, so then nibiru you, and you keep everything in hand, the only thing you lose is the one Hextia, or the one Prime Banshee, so like instances where they nib you, and you did the combo, and you ended on Banshee, now, they're actually negging one, because the Prime Banshee gets you another card, so you have 6 or 7 cards under Nib, so Nibiru works against this deck, it's just not effective, um, like, cause we're talking about Nibiru right now, but like, Nib is just really strong because it does what it needs to do i don't care if you can still play through it i just know that the resources i took from you with my one nibiru costed you probably multiple cards so as long as i can go one for two off of you that's still good for me even if i'm not stopping your turn who cares i'm playing alter guys i feel like i could just body you anyways just with a melody i could bait both your arc light and savage off one melody because you're either gonna negate the effect to send and let my effect to search resolve or you're going to negate the effect to sin and negate the effect to search you have no choice really because if you let me get faker and i already have protocol now when i flip protocol on your turn you don't have a choice but to negate protocol otherwise you can't stop faker oh so meliseek in itself already like it stops borrow load savage and arc light which is crazy so don't think that this deck sucks going second without hand traps you just need the nib the ash and the imperm because there are some decks that are trying to ftk you which means you don't get a turn other than that if it's a combo deck i feel safe because because I mean strikes, there's a lot of ways that you can stop them and in a chain war with just strike alone. Um, but for, uh, besides the hand traps, I play a standard ratio of 3 Seek, 3 Mario, and 3 Fakers, and then 2 Silk, because you don't really like drawing it, sometimes it's clutch, sometimes it's not, and then 1 Conk. I'll start with talking about Conk. So I guess I'll go over my list and I'll explain to you guys like how you want to juice your cards. The word I'm talking about is juice. Just, uh, just I give up, Kingston. You could just stay out here. It's fine. Uh, so I'll talk about how you juice your cards, but this is the standard ratio. I, I don't really like the word standard, but it's fine. And then three extravagance because it's the best draw card in this deck. I like spell books, honestly, I really do. But um, the thing with spell books is it does, unless you just do one knowledge, one secrets, one blue boy, it'll take up one extra slot in your extra deck. Like, and spell books are good. But also at the same time, it's a draw engine that could be stopped by Valor. And like with Extravagance, your opponent has to have only Ash. But with the Spellbook engine, Ash, Imperm, Valor, and also Cypher and Gear Gamma can all stop it. Not to say they will stop it, but just the fact that pretty much any hand trap, even Ghost Ogre on the Blue Boy, any hand trap basically, except like DD Crow maybe. Uh, almost any good hand trap stops the spellbook engine, which is like, okay, you bait a hand trap, but at the same time, you lose the plus one that you want, so that's why I feel like Extravagance is just superior. Um, the deck, the only extra deck cards that matter are actually the Ultra Guys cards. Occasionally, you need Access Code Talker, occasionally, because you do OTK without him. Uh, and then we play uh, two Mannies. This is not standard. A lot of people play one. I think two is correct. Really, like, if it was one of those formats where I could get away with it, I would, you guys might think I'm crazy, I would play triple. At least two minutes them right now because this card's not once per turn to activate you guys have to see all the crazy combos um i don't really go for protocol that much i feel like even though protocol is strong because it doesn't let your opponent touch your cards it really like it's so annoying like if you flip protocol against herald of perfection going first i can't do anything to you like you could just still bounce and they can't respond like you guys will see in a replay i play against it for noble knights they tried to summon arc light first before doing anything, for, well not first, they summoned in the middle of their combo trying to bait in the gate. I chained Silk, I had Protocol up, he used Arc Light anyways, and it didn't even matter. So he wasted Arc Light and I bounced what I wanted with Silk anyways. So once Protocol is up, 
all your negates cannot be negated. All your responses that are Altergeist cards cannot be responded to unless it's like target and destroy. The problem with target and destroy or ghost Sword or anything that's a spark removal is the effect still resolves most of the instances. So they can't negate your card. So no matter what, you interrupt them with protocol. That's the strong thing about this card. Forget the monster effect negate, even though that's good. The fact that this card says the only way you can respond is by dealing with my cards with Cyclone or Ogre. You can't like, you literally like can't ash the effect of faker on field like you can't imperm melisite's effect to sin like you can't do anything like this card you want to get to the ultra guys card the best cards in this deck are the ultra guys cards period everything else is almost like filler that just helps you to get until you get to the ultra guys card if it was safe and we were in a format where hand traps are necessary i would just play more ultra guys cards like i've been thinking about playing multiple kunks but we'll talk about how good this card is when we get there so as you see the imperms already talked about i play two manis you guys have to understand how good this card is like just not it's not just because it's not once per turn to activate but because also cosmic cyclone takes this completely out the game when you lose manifestation you lose one of the biggest and i mean one of the biggest parts of your grind game so now you can't grind like well you can with still with silk but the grind game comes from recurring from grave so now you have to rely on silk to recur on protocol that's the only thing you can get now and mario resolving his effect to summon from grave so this card is really really big on your grind especially if you play other trap decks you need manifestation uh i feel like this is the best trap deck this is just my biased opinion though Two, uh, two Lost Wind and two Compulse. And also, um, outside of the Ultra Guys cards, you guys see I main deck with Haunted Rock. I don't cite this card out ever. Even if I go second, this card's way too good. It's way too good. You catch bodies going second if you keep this in your main deck. You hand trap your opponent once or twice. Hit him with the Mario combo. Now you're just so far ahead. I've had Eldritch players scoop on me. And they're supposed to be able to grind with me. But the way Eldritch grinds compared to the way Ultra Guys grinds. Once they get one Hextia. Just one Hextia up. It's over. The deck it starts to get too fast for you. Um, if you ask any person that plays Ultra Guys or plays against it. They will tell you probably the same thing. There gets to a point in the duel where this deck is too. You can't keep up with it anymore like there's a point where you have to scoop where it's just too much any smart player anybody that's played against this deck knows once it gets to that point where the writing's on the wall you just pick up your cards and you go to game two or three because you know it's over that's the kind of deck this is like these these cards are really good haunter rock makes your engine happen faster the reason why i like haunter rock so much is because everything your opponent when your opponent is trying to stop this deck from going off they're trying to stop it in the early game because in the early game it's easier to beat ultra guys that's facts it's way easier to beat it in the early game once you get past turn two three four five incurring anything that's past turn one once you're set up it's so hard not impossible it's so hard because everything you do costs a card from you everything i do gives me cards back what am I saying? Silk bounces. Hexia is gonna plus. Manifestation, chain silk, bounce, and then I get a free Hexia. Hexia on Hexia, negate search. The same thing with silk, silk up on field, attack, declare an attack, chain, link rebel from grave, tribute silk, stop an attack, plus. Every time you stop your opponent when you play this deck smart, you get cards for, for yourself and you take cards from your opponent. So they neg you plus. That's how this deck works. So that's what I mean by it's really, really hard to stop it. They try to stop you early game, but that's the thing with Haunted Rock. It gets you out of the early game right now. Turn one, you're out of early game. You already have Hextias up, you have Prime Banshees, you have Manifestations and Protocols, you have Monster Negates, Spell Trap Negates, and a Kirin that can't be negated because of Protocol. Like, turn one, you, it happens turn one when you have good hands. Your good hands are when you draw Altergeist monsters that are not like Kunk. Silk even helps sometimes because if you just draw Silk and you have a way to get to another Altergeist monster, you can make Hexia on a follow-up. So it just depends. But as long as you open like one of the main nine, it, you're, you're already starting off with a really, really strong opening. Um, but anyways, besides Altergeist cards, then I play with two Crackdowns. Spoofing is kind of like our type. It, you just need three because the consistency really, really matters. And with Spoofing too, that's where it's even harder to keep keep up because spoofing lets you dodge targeting effects so whenever your opponent's going imperm chalice whenever they chain gamma any effect to negate or destroy you chain spoofing so even if the effects negated you don't lose the card and sometimes you even do cute stuff where like you uh normal mario they try to imperm or valor and you just chain spoofing mario still resolves to set because they miss target so this card's even busted like spoofing is crazy like like so your ultimate setup is with many protocol spoofing and like silk off of faker or silk off prime banshee with hexias like and you get that you get that early with haunted rock that's why i'm not gonna side it out like ever it's always there because it's too good like this deck is really really good it's like tier two is an un i feel like tier two is the worst 
like the worst you can say about this deck. You can't say it's tier three. It's not. It's absolutely not. Um. So anyways, the crackdowns. So what I like about crackdown strike, lost win, and compose is even if I lose the dice roll, long as I don't get FTK, I can use these just as good going first as I can going second. Reason being is because these cards make my opponent use their negates because I force their negate out preemptively. If I activate compose on savage, what do you think they have to do? They have to negate it or they lose their savage. If I lost win on, for example, uh, uh, I access code talker resolves his effect to gain, then I go on resolution of his effect targeting your link monster, lost win. You can't even OTK me now. So like, I just like these traps in particular. I do like Torrential, but I don't like that Torrential is easier to read into. It's easier to play around. And also going second, you have to basically, if your opponent is smart and they're not like flashy, flashy players get punished by Torrential. What do I mean by that? People try to show off on you by doing too much when they already have game. So Torrential is bad going second because when your opponent already has the board they need, they're not going to summon anymore if they're smart because it's very, very common for all guys these days to play torrential so when you play against guys you have to play around torrential heck i would say when you play against any trap deck you have to play around torrential and mirror force you just have to if you're smart because you don't know if your opponent's willing to play those cards or not so i like these because you can't play around them you have to play into them if that makes sense they can try their hardest to play around lost window but no matter what i can lost win them with torrential by playing around it they make it to where i can't Activate it if that makes sense with mirror force the same thing like uh, with mirror force They can just go access code first try to pop your back rows then the uh, mirror force is gone So these just are can't be played into and the, another thing with crackdown is when you crack down on a link two, as long as you play Celine in your extra deck It's game next turn because their link two plus any ultra guys makes Celine Celine makes access code you flip you flip manifestation uh, It's like bro. It's over the game is over like literally it's over like you flip manifestation you uh like you summon a card like seek you just normal summon like a card like mario uh you bring back a hexia from grave like it's just game it's game uh so like crackdown also lets you otk i'm sorry for my son in the background it's just you guys kingston can you calm down please thank you so yeah like these cards are really strong i'm gonna explain now since i talked about the main deck uh to an extent now i'll tell you guys what you want to do with these cards with conk Conk is not just a monster uh, attack negator. Yeah, you can Silk Bounce to negate multiple attacks. That's how you give yourself one extra turn. And guess what? At the end of it, you have two Alter Guys on the field. I would suffice to say that once you have two Alter Guys on field, it's game. Especially when you've used so many traps and hand traps on your opponent. They're on low res- Stop it, Kingston. Stop. They're on low resources. Because they're on low resources, you make Hexia. That's where it's like this deck. It's kind of like you think about Strikers. You out-resource them. This deck, honestly, because with Strikers, the way they are, I feel like this deck's way better than Strikers. Just period. And plus, the way this deck set up is always going to be better than how Striker sets up. The only thing Striker has on this deck is that they can play There Can Only Be One. I would say that's it. Anything else, oftentimes, like, you just have Hextias. And Hextias and Protocol with Silk also is just insane. Like, like your setups are way stronger and plus strikers like they kind of have to go second to get the effect that they want because like they need hayate and kagari for consistency but kunk the better way to use kunk honestly is like shadal op cologne just as a negator so you summon this off of prime banshee off of faker or off manifestation to negate cards like for example um face up field spells like generator boss stage boot sector launch uh your opponent Link summons for access code talker. You flip a uh, manifestation summon conk negate access code talker's effect while he's face up on the field and he's 24. Access code talker's 23. That is hilarious. That access code literally cannot out the conk, which is crazy. Like it's negated as long as he's face up on the field. That's just one instance. Just using conk as a negate, you already have protocol, you already have silk, you already have um hexia, like and you have your traps like strike, but now you use conk as a negator versus just an attack negator my goodness this card is insane and on top of that it's not once per turn you use it to negate the card and your opponent's like ah i just get rid of that card i link it off whatever the case is flip silk and then just use it in battle phase to negate again and negate an attack like this card's insane like kunk is so strong i wish it was normal summonable it's so fire mario in my opinion is the best ultra guys monster because no matter whether it's early mid late game it's always good the problem with faker and seek 
is they're as good as your main deck is. So once you run out of good targets, these become less and less useful, unless you're using spoofing to keep them live, like to make them as impactful as they always will be early game. You guys have to understand what I'm saying. If you play guys, you know what I mean. Like Seek runs out of good targets. It might not run out of targets, but it'll run out of good targets. The good targets are Faker and Mario. After that, it's like Silk. No, you don't search this. You don't search this. And Conk is maybe debatable. Sometimes I just summon Conk off the deck or grave. So like with Seek and Faker, because you run out of targets, these become less impactful. Or you might not run out of targets, but you run out of good targets. You'll hit a point where you can only summon like Mario. And the thing with Mario is it's always good, even if it can't set a trap, which you can use spoofing to make it always live that way, but you don't need to. It's always good because this card in versus Faker and Seek, it gets better and better the later the duel goes because you get better and better cards in your grave. You get Hexia and Banshees in your grave and now Mario is better than it was in the beginning of the duel. That's what I mean by this is the best Altergeist monster in my opinion. Just resolve, like even if your opponent somehow breaks your five interruption board and they just can't do anything, their steam is so low because they had to break it, they didn't on like one interrupt or anything and you just flip, for example, Lost Wind or the Negate. That's why sometimes you can hold Lost Wind for you to be able to play next turn. You just hold Lost Win, and like you just normal Mario, they're like affect to negate. I chain Lost Win. Aw, oh, dang, it's forever. Now it's negated forever. Resolve Mario, set Manifestation, and then resolve his effect to summon Hextia, and then turn Hextia into Link Cross. Bro, it's game over. Like, there's a point in this when you're playing Alter Guys that your opponent has to scoop because they can't keep up with you. This is a trap deck that you can't keep up with. That doesn't even sound like it makes sense. With Faker, you have to be patient. Sometimes when you already have a setup and you're confident, you're like, I don't need an next turn because I know I have everything I need you could just be like it's fine because that's when you have seek in hand for example uh, but sometimes you don't want to just resolve faker like sometimes you do because you're playing combo and you're like dang I need as many interrupts as I can get I understand that rock is a good deck at emancipators and dragon link you probably do need to resolve faker on silk so that you can actually survive the thing with holding your follow-ups is your follow-ups don't matter if you don't get another turn so that's where yeah faker you kind of just have to but with me I try my hardest to save fake like if I have four back rows and a faker i'm gonna try to use three back rows see if it's enough and if it's enough then i save my one trap and i like to save traps like compulse or like crackdown because i can activate these whenever i want the same with lost wind they're not cards that directly respond like even strike your opponent has to do something but with these you can activate them whenever you want you can even imperm a monster that doesn't even have a good effect just so you can do this this is where i get game playing um ultra guys i go in face faker do you know how insane in face faker is in face faker is game in face faker is game faker summon seek link these two off into hexia or just use seek and battle face to get rid of one of their cards then you could just do main phase two hexia but either way it's game because faker and seek into hexia effect of seek search mario if you didn't already have it if you have mario search another faker or even such search conk it's whatever you want search and then normal Mario pointing to Hextia, use Mario's effect, set manifestation. This is where it gets out of control. Then use Mario's effect, summon Faker back from grave. You resolved it on your opponent's end phase, resolve Faker again. You can summon out Silk, for example. And let's say if you have a protocol on grave, you summon Silk for sure. Then you leak Silk and the Faker into a second Hexia. Grab your protocol. Bro, you have double Hexia plus manifestation now. So now you don't you can even go even further. You can link both the Hexias into um, Prime Banshee, get the effect of Hexia, search another Alter Guys card, like Protocol if you want it, if you didn't have that interaction to get it from Grey, then you wouldn't summon Silk off Faker. But once you go double Hexia into Banshee, Banshee can now summon Kunk from Deck and Faker. So now you have Negate on spot whenever you want, on Command and Faker whenever you want to. And then that's the instance where you just search double Manny. Then you go Manny, target um, the Hexia, it resolves. Then Manny, target Hexia, summon Hexia zone, resolve Faker, Faker effect, summon the Silk, pointing to the second Hexia, so that you can use Silk Bounce and still keep the negate off Hexia. And it's game, because no matter what your opponent does, if they break your board, what happens? Banshee adds from grave to hand, Hexia adds from uh, deck to hand, Silk adds from grave to hand, and I'll suffice to say, if you really want it to be crazy, if you already had Silk up, you just summon Seek, then you use Seek's effect off of tributing Link Rebo on Battle Phase, Tribute Seek, Search. Now you really can't get killed because so now you have Link Karibo and you have Conk. Like, that's why I say this deck is so annoying. Like, it's literally like the deck that doesn't let you play, but it builds it up. It doesn't just start off from the jump. You can't play unless you resolve, like, Mario plus Haunted Rock. So that's what I mean by like, how good this deck is. I was just talking about how you want to juice.
juice your cards. Like, Link Karibo with Seek is really strong for resource management because you make sure you can't die. And with this deck, you just need one turn. One turn. That's it. You As long as you don't get LTK, sometimes you just take the damage. You're like, oh, you're attacking for 3,000? All right, that's fine. I'm not going to resolve Faker unless I just need the Faker, you know? Because sometimes you can resolve Faker to make sure you don't get LTK. But if you're not getting LTK, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes you, you might just want to take the damage so that you could just resolve Faker in phase and then it's game. So I'll talk about the main deck. Extra deck is kind of standard. You do want to play Link Kribo, All Mirage, at least one Anima, because not everybody plays around it. And some combo decks, they have to summon to every one of their their six zones or their five zones. So no matter what, Anima can eat something. That's where Smellacy takes two cards from your opponent and gets a surge. Like, which is really strong. So if you like, for example, side Dark Ruler no more, then Seek takes uh, one of their monsters on, on command for his effect, takes another off Anima, and then you get an Ultra Guys card. So you go plus three, because your opponent goes next to, if your opponent next, I feel like that's a plus for you because you're playing guys. So it's like, then Seek is a plus three, which is crazy. No, I'm sorry, it's only a plus two. I'm tripping, I take that back, because Dark Ruler no more doesn't let you do battle damage. So I'm sorry about that. I really have to change that wording. But really, just by playing Anima, you make Seek be able to take multiple cards from your opponent, which is insane. Saying. Link Cross is so how you can turn Hexia into resources on command. So that way, if you didn't have crazy combos and all you could do is summon Hexia, it's still game because you trigger Hexia. You you like Ultra Guys cards are the best cards in the deck. When you have Manifestation and Protocol online with Hexia and Grave, your opponent just it's so hard to keep up. Like then then like even if they can keep up, you keep plusing every single time. It's like Gokies. Like every time you kill a card, they replace themselves. Every time they link, they replace themselves. The same thing. You link with Silk, with Seek, with Hexia, with Banshee, they all replace themselves. It's the same exact thing. Even Manifestation replaces itself. It's crazy. So, like, these are all standard. You want to play all these. Selene is good, even though you pl don't play spells. They'll have it in their grave probably for you. So then Selene is game because you go to access code. Then you, that's why, like, again, like, in face Faker is good because it doesn't lock you into Ultra Guys uh, only on your turn. Then you can go into Selene access code. And then, like, normal Mario uses effect, bring back, like, Seek, then leak off into Hexia, get Seek to search Faker in case it's not game. And it's just like, it's over, dude. Uh, I play Neen because the problem with this deck is if a monster can't be targeted, or like destroyed by card effects, access code can only possibly out it by battle. Possibly. That would be your only way to out it. But then like if you can't do that, you literally can't out the card. So like Dragoon that's too big is a problem. So Ningirsu is good because it outs it without uh, targeting or destroying. And I also like Ning because some of the cards you send like Seek, Silk, um, you can even like send like Manny because all those cards are replaced themselves. You can normally replace the card that you send off Ning and then link him off in an access code after you're done and then go for game. So I feel like Ultra Guys should play Ningirsu. You should know that your deck struggles with Abramax and BLS. Like beating over it is not always going to be the solution. Sometimes you can't. And also keep in mind that you can summon Ningirsu without playing into uh, Nibiru because you can use Manifestation to summon your Link to Hexia and then just like summon. You could even summon Link. Kribo from Grave off of Seek and then make Ningirsu playing around Nibiru. If you play into Nibiru, now you can't even out that card. And then even though they Nibiru their board, now you just lose your play that you have. Which is like for me, that's why I like Ning, because it also plays under Nibiru. Even though I know Nibiru takes away the cards you're trying to out, the fact that they can Nibiru you sucks because you lose the cards you were using to get there. The side deck is, the only thing I'll say is like spicy, I guess, is Duster and Anti-Spell, but really they're not. Duster to me is just better than Cyclone because it's a trap, it activates Faker, and also I don't pay light points and it hits two cards instead of one. So I just feel like Duster superior because decks that um, I need to use Cyclone against typically is just Floodgates. And with Floodgates, that means that I have a turn because they're playing Floodgates. Like for um, Salad, they're probably the only deck that plays, well no, because they can't access code, so never mind. They can't even go to game, go for game under goes in match you just want to hit goes in and there can only be one and maybe like skill drain if they actually play it or like if you play sacred beast and they have their skill drain like all the cards that i need a cyclone i can just duster it and it's fine so i can wait a turn because even if i have to um make sure i can't get ultk i have kunk faker seek like i have everything i need this deck is hard to kill it's like that's the truth so what i'm gonna do now since i pretty much just went over the list uh judgments just in case you don't open the mario combo you can stop evilly and lightning storm if you don't open judgment or the mario combo game two and three to be sure that you're safe 
if hopefully you have a hand trap that's where it's really good you try not to set all your back rows try not to if you have faker in hand you're really really lit then you can just set one or two back rows keep the rest of your traps so if they lightning storm you you don't lose everything that's just a smart play if they evenly you don't lose everything then on reds you can still resolve faker because even if they evenly you and you just chain for example um like let's say you just chain protocol which is like the easiest one to activate if they evenly you yes you do have to cha you have to keep protocol um but like resolution is multi faker most multi faker doesn't change the activation of protocol so evenly resolved you keep protocol because you chained it and then you summon a faker that can't be stopped even though they evenly you because you keep protocol so there's ways to do it they just you just gotta be smart with it uh i'll go to replays let's go to geist um i got a lot of duels against inferno knights so let's start off with um i guess numeron eldritch because that's kind of meta pause so he has access to both of his engines the numeron cards and eldritch I, my hand is not that great um i do have access to um faker or any alter guys monster i want but it loses to ash because i don't have strike but i do have two hand traps this is good against this deck this is debatable the only time it's good is if they actually, for example, um, summon after Zexo. So if they like activate black, I don't know, like if they just for whatever reason summon after they make Zexo, then Nib's good. If they're smart, Nib's dead. Nib's dead. So I really, realistically, I have one hand trap if he's a good player. Um, and I have Crackdown, which is going to take care of the Zexo. I have spoofing to get access to my engine. So, and my top deck is going to be another spoofing. So like I'm living on a prayer to, in a sense, my hand's not that great. Um, his hand's good though, because he has everything he needs. But I am going first. As you guys see, I kept many in hand because I need Spoofing to be live. If I set this, I have to be able to activate it for Spoofing to use. And as you see, I can't. So I have to keep this in hand. It does look like I have three hand traps theoretically though. What are you doing, Kingston? He activates no more on wall. Now that I see I'm playing against um, Zexalock, I know now I might want to use Crackdown on him. So he goes battle. I use Crackdown on the Zexal. I take his Zexal. So I don't even have to worry about it because like, the thing with it is, as you guys can see, pause, I don't have a negate for Zexel. So it's either I end phase Zexel or I, I just crack down it right now so I don't take 3k damage. So it's like the only difference if I save crack down is I take 3000 damage versus taking him now. Which means I get Zexel and I don't take 3k versus end phase Zexel because if I wait to chain to his effect, it already activated. Crackdown doesn't negate effects that are already activated. It only prevents them from activating in the first place. So you can't chain Crackdown as Exo and think that it negates. It doesn't work like that. So I just cracked down it right away. He activates Curse. The reason why I don't Ash, even though he could use Golden Lord to get, give back his um Zexo, I don't Ash is be the reason being is because I'm living on a prayer. Like, I'm living on a prayer to an extent. Because don't get me wrong, like, um, Zexo is good against my deck to an extent. But like this is my my mindset so this is what it is if i ash on cursed and he has um conquistador with where's it at sanguine then he outs my only way to access altergeist cards and then i lose two cards because i shuffle for cost and i lose my spoofing versus just him getting his zexel back he gets his zexel back i can steal uh, use spoofing on his turn and then resolve faker on his turn if you guys understand so this is the smart play hold ash if i activate ash for one Elden can still activate next turn, so I kind of neg in the terms of uh, marginal diminishing card of value. And then also at the same time, now if he has um, the Conquistador plus Sanguine, he'll pop spoofing. So I'm trying to hold Ash so I can Ash his Sanguine, so that way Conquistador doesn't get to pop and I can play Yu-Gi-Oh. You guys have to understand, I need to help myself more than hurt him right now. So what I'm saying is like, this is the smart play. Like you guys can say I'm wrong for it, but I'm really, I feel like this is the best way to do it. I need my engine. If I don't get my engine, it doesn't matter whether he has Zexo or not. I'm gonna lose no matter what. Period. Whether Zexo stops me from activating anything. So that's my that's my mindset. I go in phase spoofing, and then I get Faker. Summon Faker. Guess what I get? Seek. This is game, my brother. This is game. Like this is absolutely game. So <laughs> watch this. So I draw Extravagance per turn. Now it's definitely game if it wasn't already. Uh, and he does exactly what, and I'm not saying this, what I said wasn't because um, I know the replay or anything. I did this because I knew this was my only chance. Like, I know that I could spoofing on in phase, but also keep in mind, like, if he has Ash, I lose even harder. It's better at least to try to spoofing on, um, to try to uh, do it the way I was talking about, because I lose less. So, like, this, if this is Ash, 
a nice spoofing on in phase then i kind of lose but not as hard as i would if i would have just done exactly what i was talking about holding the ash so ultimately that was the thing hold ash for sanguine if you guys understand and this is what happens i ask sanguine now he can't pop anything conquistador just comes out so now i only have to worry about two back rows so i'm not sure if i did yeah i definitely extravagance not in any zone that he has a spell or trap uh pause i drew into mario plus conk if this wasn't game already, it's double game. Because now I normal Mario set a haunted rock, it's over. Like, it's literally over. I'm basically OTKing him. Uh, and I have double Hexia and Prime Banshee. So, like, Extravagance was good to me. Plus Link Cross. Uh, so, like, this is where Alter Guys get to shine. So, I uh, Link off into Hexia. Seek. So, you can go Battle Phase Seek just to take a card. But because it's already game, I can get way more damage this way. And I know that I can make sure that I stop anything. Because even if he imperms Hexia right here, okay, whatever. Now you only have one back row. And I can still OTK you potentially. Potentially. Because, um, let me see if I have Selene. Let me see. Because I didn't resolve Faker on my turn. So, I can summon Axe code okay but i still can link off all right so yeah pressing play i searched for faker off seek since i already have mario no more mario pointing pointing to hextia and he chains canadia which is kind of a strange card then i chain spoofing instead of chaining hextia because i'm basically just gonna get mario back in my deck mario's better in my deck right now than he is in my grave i just need more access to cards that i, that I really really want mario stays in deck and so he chains um impermanent so if i chain hextia tribute the um mario for cost then he chains imperm i lose one of my marios it's better for mario to be in deck right now because i don't have access to uh manifestation at this moment so i spoofing him and it made him basically fizzle on his canadia and then he imperms on the hexia because he's scared of the negate and it turns off my spoofing too so spoofing doesn't resolve so this is where my play if i would have chained hexia it probably would have been better but i felt in my mind that chaining spoofing uh on the uh the mario was just better for me to keep all my cards in deck that i need but as you see i did lose out on the spoofing which is fine because look at what's in my hand then i activate haunted rock so i can resolve faker on my turn and he surrenders you know why because the writing's on the wall he can't use any more of his um his Elich cards because I'm gonna have double Hexia with Manifestation, which means that I can stop both of his floaters, and on top of that, I get Seek out because, like, everything's gonna recur itself. Like, it's already over. Like, it's already game over. So he scoops because you, like, a smart player that goes against Ultra Guys and knows how it works, you know when it's time to scoop. You scoop so you can save yourself time so that you don't lose in time because there's no point in even trying. You're gonna waste more time. Even if you win, it's gonna take way too long to win. I'm telling you, it takes way too long because i played against ultra guys i know it's like it's really annoying that deck is so like once it gets going that's that's it like with pendulums it's kind of easier once they get going you could stop them still and plus when you break their board it's hard to remake it with ultra guys you break their board they replace it every time hexia banshee manifestation silquitas and seek and prime banshee if i didn't already say it all replace themselves so even when you break my board you can potentially give me six cards in hand if i have everything going for myself every card i need in rotation you give me six cards in hand are you kidding me so um Ooh, oh yeah, this is against Strikers. Okay, this is cool. Pause, he has double nib, cyclone, uh, upstart, and aerial, aerial zero. I just wanted to do it because I was talking about how I think guys is better than Strikers, so I might as well just put this one up. Uh, my hand, again, I have spoofing many. I also like that I'm playing a um, higher amount of Alter Geist cards so that spoofing's not dead as often. Because when you draw spoofing with no Alter Geist cards, it's literally just a trap that you can activate. That's it. So we're going to see how this plays out. He has one starter in his hand though, only one, which is area zero. So his hand's actually bad, because if area zero whips, he's playing like, he's letting me play solitaire. Uh, but look what he's got top deck, another cyclone, which is gonna help him to an extent because I'm playing a trap deck, but he gets lucky with the rows. He upstarts into rows. So then he goes area zero, I activate compulse on the rows so that I stop him from getting his striker engine online this turn so that he doesn't get to go um, in phase Shizuku or go into Hayate or Kagari. I don't even want him to summon them. I don't. I just go Imperm right now. And also, by activating Imperm, now he has to set a card from his hand for Area 0. So it's like, it's better for me to Imperm now. So I go Imperm on Rose. Then he's going to go Area 0. I'm sorry, not Area 0. He chains Cyclone. Targeting my spoofing. Then I chain spoofing. Um, even though it's getting banished, it's going to resolve first. It's chain link 2. So it's going to resolve. And then it gets banished. Spoofing, Shuffle, many for cost. Thank God he didn't have Ash. But I did have Strike in case he did. And then I go on resolution faker 
uh, I might not get a chance to act. This is where it matters. The reason being is because I'm playing against Striker, I might not be able to activate Imperm or Strike. That means I might not get another chance to resolve Faker. So this is where I have to resolve Faker early instead of later. You guys have to understand, since this is probably the only way he's going to play monsters that I can Imperm or Strike unless he opens like Hornet Drones, I can't activate any of these. So I have to do Faker now. You guys, like, you have to understand my uh, reasoning. So play, he, uh, Cyclones on Strike was actually nice because Strike on his, um, his, um, his Lynx is really good. I go into Hexia, it's already game over. It's literally already game over. Even if he Nibiru's me, I have Protocol in hand. It's, it's over. Uh, I go Mario, normal Mario, effect. I'm gonna set Manny, which is like better to me. I just like it better. I go Battle Phase for damage first, just in case he has Nibiru. So at least I get damage before, cause if I do everything in main phase one, whatever damage I could get, it depletes to pretty much zero. But at least now I put him at 1300 life and then he Nibiru's me. And this is where he negs. So I do my combo, Mario for Faker, Faker into Seek. Link in another Hexia, he nibs. He goes neg one, I go plus one because Faker searches. And guess what else? Now his nib did literally nothing because I can still, basically all it took away was one Hexia. One extra Hexia negate, which really, it doesn't make a difference for me personally because I'm up so far ahead. I have Manifestation to bring back the Hexia. And then on top of that, I have Faker and Protocol and Imper. It's it's over. That's why I was saying when you resolve Faker's Seek on end phase, it's kind of over. But since I didn't have a chance to do it in phase, I just do it on his turn. And he can't really out it unless he has like, I don't know, like a Kaiju or a, like Dark Hole. And then I um, pass. Manny on standby because he's playing Striker. Summon Hexia. I think I made a mistake. Yeah, this is my mistake. It's always better to summon Silquitas to Hexia zone than Faker because you can still resolve Silk first and then Hexia. If you do it this way, resolving uh, Faker. Hey, baby. Okay. Oh, yes, baby. And then, uh, so if you resolve Faker and make it point to Hexia, now you're in a situation where you have to resolve, um, like, Faker or Silk Queen. Like, you have to really resolve Faker, uh, Hexia first, attribute Faker. Then you resolve Silk. And now your Silk has to kill your Hexia. You get a search, so still good, and you get Manifestation back in hand. But you can't really choose the order when you do it, because if you uh do, if you do Silk first, now Hexia can't resolve. If you do Hexia first, Silk has to kill Hexia. So it's absolutely smart, and I feel like you should just say it's mandatory to never summon Faker to Hexia Zone if you're summoning out Silk. If you're summoning anything else, it doesn't really matter. Well, like, yeah, then you probably want to summon, like, um, Smellaseek to Hexia Zone so you plus more, but with this instance, it's always smarter to do Silk in his zone. So this is a misplay on my behalf, and I'm telling you guys right now because I recommend you guys don't do this. Don't do what I did. It's just like I had a brain fart because I know that it's better to do, um, Silk Quidus pointing to Seek, but he loses anyways. Like, look at what I have. I have Imperm. I have protocol, I have a negate for any spell he uses. I don't negate area zero, I don't care about that. If he gets a good card, then I negate it. And I still have silk. So this way, oh yeah, another uh, brain fart that I had, I forgot to set protocol. It's just like sometimes you, like, I just forget, man. Like, I just, I think, um, what time was this? Six four. Oh yeah, this was at 4.40 in the morning. It's no wonder why I forgot to set protocol. It's almost 5 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Yes, baby. Yes. Oh my goodness, my son is just like, hey. Drink bottle, drink your bottle. Uh, so let's go against. Oh, invoked Numeron. Okay, this is like another cool deck. Look at his spice though. Look at he's playing Time Stream. So he's playing like a fossil engine and invoke. He's just playing three engines in one deck. I am all for this because I'm like an engine dude too. I will play a 60 card deck with like dinos, dangers, orcas, and zombies all in the same deck and probably see what else I could squeeze in. If I could fit Predator Plants, I'll squeeze that in too. That's just me. And he's doing like so I, I actually approve of what he's doing. He has Ashen Hands, so he has one hand trap. My hand is the goo because he's using Zexalock, which I feel like this is trendy. I've been playing against a lot of Zexo decks, you guys. A lot of them. Like, a lot. Because of Zexo luck, I feel like this matchup is free for me. Because he's pri his priority of his deck is to summon a monster that doesn't really do that good against me. So, I don't have to play on my turn. I can play on his turn. That's really how Ultra Guys shine a lot of time. It's playing on your opponent's turn. If I play combo, yeah, Zexo eats me alive because I have to play on my turn. But this is a deck that can both play on its own turn and your opponent's turn, respectively. So, does Zexo really do anything? It maybe stops me from resolving, like, Mario or like extravagance like with seek maybe at that point i just keep seek on field and just like protocol him and it's fine
Another cute thing with uh, Compose I forgot to mention is you can compose your Marionetter so you have a follow-up, which is really cute, and then you resolve Faker. It's just like things that you can do, because then when you go into Seek, you can use Seek to search out Conquery, which is insane, because Conquery is just so good. I'm going first though. I set Manny, Lost Wind, and Compose. I keep Manny in hand, because I can't even resolve it, the second one realistically, so I just keep it in hand. It looks like a hand trap now, so now when I resolve Faker, at least it looks like I have a hand trap. He goes into Mega Clops, which was weird to me. What's also weird is that he plays into... Well, no, this doesn't get Nibiru, so I can only Nibiru this. So I guess, I guess what he did was kind of smart, but it literally doesn't make sense also Daddy. that this was summoned in defense. Daddy. Yes, yes, my love. What's wrong? Yeah? Really? Hey. Yeah. I love you, okay? Go eat your Cheetos. This is also weird that he didn't summon this in um, attack. And this card actually doesn't even get any effects except being like a walking pseudo. Pseudo, and I mean like literally pseudo. Not even comparable to towers because I don't even need monster effects to get rid of it. So I feel like what he did did not help him in fact i think he just went neg one so pressing play he attacks i just compulse it and then i resolve faker because i realize i'm playing zexel so now i know he can't swarm anymore except like one more summon so basically my lost win is gonna secure that he can't do anything else to me so i do resolve faker early instead of in face because i already know i could do it and also just in case like i don't want to have to waste lost win on his um numeron card just to be able to resolve faker on in face uh, to resolve Faker on Inface, so what I do is Faker early, that way I don't waste a trap just to do the play I was telling you guys about, like, Inface Faker, I just do it now, he chains Ash, it's still fine, yes, my love, it's still fine because I can, um, Manny on Faker whenever I get it in Grave, so I just attack, uh, he Numeron walls, he puts a monster on field, I set, uh, Strike and Manny, now I set the Manny, cause, just in case I try to Manny on Faker when he dies and something happens, I can Manny again, uh, which is really, really cool, so, I'm good to go. He activates terraforming. Now he reveals his um his invoke portion of his deck. So he's slowly revealing more and more of his deck. So now in case of side decking, I know what, what to do. That's one thing that's really cool too. Like um if you play multiple engines, I feel like the smart thing to do is don't reveal everything about your deck unless you have to. In this instance, I don't really think he had too much of a choice unless he just wanted to play his fossil cards, which uh I don't think he could. So all he could do was like go um into wall i think no wall doesn't work on field wait 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 x oh yeah wall does so the only thing he could do is go into another numeron network and like do zexel but i think what he did was smart because zexel is not that good against his deck so he has no choice but i am telling you guys as a smart thing if you do have a choice to not reveal more of your engine don't do it so in case you do win your opponent can only side deck according to the knowledge that you gave them and that's just a smart thing to do so i strike on his uh his his invoker he passes so like my faker is actually up like faker ain't playing no games faker is up faker ain't going nowhere i throw spoofing so now uh he sets in phase it's game it's game you guys it's game faker for seek it's game i'm telling you guys this is game like ask any other guys player when they resolve this this is game. Yes, yes. My son is like really wanting me right now. I, I got you, Papa, as soon as I'm done. So look, I go into the player saw mount, seek, search Mario, summon Hexia first, then normal to his zone, because he has three back rows, so I can at least, if he tries to negate um, Ma Ma Mario, I chain Hexia, negate, Mario still resolves, because it was already normal summon. I set what you think protocol, because I already have access to double Manny. So I do one Manny now, Faker into Silk. Then I do Faker and Mario, I'm sorry, Silk and Mario into Hexia. More damage, and then in battle. The reason why I did that was for more damage, because I know I have game in battle phase by activating Manny to summon Mario. If it's not game, you leave Silk on field, because you're going to need an extra, well not need, but you just want the protocol, the Silk, double Manny. That's like the ultimate setup. You have uh, double Hexia, Manny's in rotation. Hey, Kingston, open that door. I want to make sure you didn't lock it. Open that door. Open my door. So, like, yeah, when you have double Hexia and uh, you have uh, Protocol Manny up online and then Silk, it's game. But I OTK them in um, Battle Phase. Well, I finished them off in Battle Phase. Doo -doo -doo. And hold on one second. I just want to make sure my son didn't lock my door. Because he's crazy. Don't go in there, okay, Papa? Come here. Come sit down. You crazy fatty man. You're crazy. Here, eat your Cheetos, okay? But you need to sit down now, because 
Daddy doing something. When I'm done, I'll play with you. So uh, now I'm gonna go invoke Numeron game two. Here, your bottle. I put there's some water in there for you. Uh, so oh whoops, my bad. Oh yeah, I forgot. I gotta talk about his opening hand. So he opened kind of similar to last time, except he has access to invoke now versus later. He still has an Astro. It's almost like the same opening as before. He had access to Numeron cards, his fossil cards. This card is nuts. If Foolish Burials any rock, and then if Fossil Fusion's in your grave, you draw one. But no matter what, it's a Foolish Burial for rocks. Can you imagine how good this would be if, like, not to say Adam Spaders need a Foolish Burial level four lowers, but imagine if you played, like, any rock deck that actually thrives off the grave. This is, like, an instant staple because it gives you four more Foolish Burials for, like, your level four lowers. So I think Miracle Rap Rupture is, like, wow. It's going to be insane one day. There's going to be some rock deck that thrives off the grave that like gets actual effects when their cards are sent to the grave and then you're gonna be sending them and it's not for cost as you can see so like you're literally just this card's insane but like he activates calling from hand do i think this is correct no unless you only play one calling which also isn't correct because then when you draw it your network's dead the reason why you don't activate calling from hand is because you keep four cards in your hand the moment you give off information that you're playing hand traps you want to give off the instance that you may have more hand traps the more cards you keep in your hand the more your opponent has to assume you have hand trap you activate calling now you technically went neck one because you lost a card in hand you could have used networks effect to send from deck that also prevents you from top decking into another calling so the only reason why this is going to be good is if he plays one calling but that's also to me incorrect because it's just like when you play dark tony a cobra and you draw it now your whole predator plant engine's dead Dead if you play it as an engine so I feel like everything about this I'm not putting him down I'm just like I'm commentating you guys for me I feel like this is just not correct but it is what it is he's still summoning um, whatever he wants to summon he plays around the beer this time he goes into mega clops so let me check out his extra deck because I'm just wondering why does he like mega clops so much <gasps> oh because he doesn't play Zexo okay he's he's different that's why so he's not incorrect for so many mega clops um, in that one game one, I thought it was bad that he summoned Mega Clops because I've had three back rows, but he doesn't have Zexel. He's just playing a different kind of deck. I actually like that too, that he's trying something different. So, I gotta give him props. My bad, uh, Mr. Texting New Deck ID. I drew into Imperm. Um, Spoofing? Let me see if Spoofing's dead. Yeah, Spoofing's dead. So, I need Imperm, Strike, and Lost Wind and Strike and Ash to get me there. But since he plays on a, a deck that needs monster effects to gain me, he's... Uh, not gonna be able to game me unless like i don't know he has like double twin twister and cyclone uh so he top decks into this medusa worm he's playing super spice like what is this guy doing i don't know i like his deck though let me pause is this a rock oh it's a rock what is he doing there th like you guys can't always write off cards and think they're bad just because you don't know what, what the purpose is you have to learn what the purpose is there for before you think it's bad so i can't say he's bad for playing medusa worm because i don't know what its purpose in his deck is some people just really don't understand that so commonly you know Yu-Gi-Oh players kind of are mean sometimes and they'll probably say oh this is trash you don't play medusa worm they don't even know what if he has some crazy combo with this so i feel like this is spice because i don't know what its purpose is i feel like he's not gonna play this just to set it because he has a strong normal summon being alistair this is there for a reason the fact that it's a rock and he plays fossils gives me an indication for something i top deck into extravagance let's go banish six ash no baby chain strike i'm drawing two i'm drawing two it's game it's game it's game i Drew double silk it's still game get faker faker summon seek summon seek hextia it's game you guys it is game over normal mario game over I, i'm telling you guys every time you do this basically faker into seek is just game like i got manifestation already uh i'm probably gonna get protocol off hexia because i'm gonna be able to um Summon fake. No, no, no. I think I have to get. I, matter of fact, I think I have to get another faker. No, 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 no. I don't have to because spoofing searches faker and I have traps to activate. So I think I should get either protocol or probably another manifestation, knowing how much I love. Manifestation is my favorite Alter Guys trap. So it's game. Mario's gonna uh, summon Seek so I can get rid of his face down. Effective Seek to. Oh, no, no, no. No, my bad. I get rid of Network. Oh, why did I get rid of his face down? Dang, I should have got, I feel like looking back at this, I should have went for the face down because Network doesn't do jack squat against this deck. Uh, so pressing play. Oh, okay, Hexia and his face down. 
uh, once per turn, you can flip summon this. When this card flips on, destroy one monster on your opponent's side of the field. He didn't activate Medusa Worm. That's interesting. <laughs> Just strange. Oh, bless you, Papa. Not him. Oh, you're welcome, too. Okay. I link it to another. Hey, my baby's so cute. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. 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 Uh, so he link. I li he links. I link it to another Hexia because I want multiple Hexia. I don't want Banshee right now. I go for Banshee after the second. Mm -hmm. Oh, my baby, trying to kiss me. I go for the second Hexia after I see Banshee. So I go for Hexia because now um, Manny. Oh, okay, I'll give you another kiss. Mm -hmm. I love you so much, Papa. So, so this is where, like, I many for Hexia, but I think I should, um, oh, okay, my love, sit down, okay, Papa, sit down. I think I should spoofing for Faker first before I try to many, but we'll see. I, I'm trying to remember, because I don't remember what I was doing on this game, but... Oh, I do! Yes, I'm glad I did, because I was going to have to critique myself. Not have to, but I probably, you know... Then I go Manny, target Hexia, Hexia on Hexia. Let me see if I, yes, I did it right this time. Summon Silk pointing to Hexia, that's the correct play. There we go, I chain Ash on the rupture. I have enough interrupts. Ash, like I don't wanna waste Hexia, so I don't wanna waste um, Hexia on that. Um, and also I have interrupts for anything else that comes from his hand, so I Ash that, so I save interrupts, which means I keep damage on board for game next turn. Uh, I Imperm on his, um, his Alistair. So now if the last card in his hand is Invocation, I get rid of it and he loses. So like, this is really, really good for me. And I save my Strike and my Protocol. Like, it's already game. Like, that's what I'm saying. Once you see this, you see how fast I got to it too? It didn't take me that long. Like, it did not take that long. I think it took like, my till my second turn. My first turn I didn't have it, then my second turn I got it. So you see how fast Ultra guys are moving? It doesn't take that long. You just need to draw the cards. Like with other trap decks, especially with Guru, Guru takes a long time, you guys. Like, it really does. Like, because, like, the consistency is not the same as Altergeist and the damage output. Like, anybody with a good mindset of comparing these two decks knows Altergeist have, have a higher damage output ceiling than Guru, and they're faster, and they set up better interrupts. Sure, yeah, one Omni to get off Venus is cute, but isn't, technically speaking, having Protocol, Speller, Trap Negates, and a, a Conquery, uh, basically, uh, a Kirin bounce better, and plus Conqueror is a, a negate anyways. The reason being is because you can negate any action. You don't need an Omni negate since you already can negate monsters, spells, or traps. Those are the three cards you can negate. Plus you have a bounce, and you also have negates off Conqueror, and you have constant recursion from your grave off Manifestation. I don't think any time is Guru going to wax Altergeist unless they flip. There can only be one and I don't have an out. And then at that point, it's not Guru winning. It's really the Floodgate that's winning. So, I think Alter Guys are the best trap deck. Uh, he goes in the Alistair and Volker, but like, again, I don't even need to worry about um, the effect, like striking the summon. He scoops. Like, that's what, because I went into, I, I fakered it to seek, you guys. Like, come on. That is absolutely game. Ooh, this is a game against Megalith. Let me show um, Inferno Nights notes. Since these are more like meta, like, Invoke Numeron's definitely meta. Uh, Numeron Elish is definitely meta. Uh, so now we're gonna go into Infra Noble Knights. Uh, which game one is it? Let's just go to this game one. I see multiple game ones. Whoops. So let's go back. Okay. Game one. Stop. Kingston. Pause. His hand is, uh, pretty fire. <laughs> it is. He has Ash Phantasmic. Well, I'm probably not gonna link on this turn. As you see, I don't have any Ultra Guys monsters. Um, oh, oh, this is the duel where I was very, 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 very frugal with my traps. I'm talking about I didn't flip my traps until I had no other choice because I knew I, the only way I was going to live. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, I love you, fatty. And you, and too. You're so cute. Uh, so I knew the only way I was going to live is if I used my cards to protect myself from dying. Now, stop, hold on. So now I can't use my cards to stop him from playing. I have to use my cards to stop myself from dying so I can live to, for a turn because I have to draw into something good. So you guys are going to see what I do. You may question what I did and be like, why didn't you use the trap then? Why don't you use the trap then? Because I have to stop myself from getting OTK. Basically, I need to survive a turn. I'm good with strike, so I have basically Nibiru strike. Oh, this is also the game where it did not let me activate Nibiru. It didn't highlight in my hand and say, do you want to activate an effect for it? I was kind of upset about that. But my idea was like, okay, no matter what he does, 
at the end of the day, if he's going to game me, I have Nibiru Strike. It don't matter if he puts up Arclight Savage and a Dagon, uh, like another Omni Negate. I activate Nibiru, they chain Negate, I strike, the whole board goes bye-bye. And then I crack down for the Nibiru token, even though it can't attack, just so it doesn't attack over me. So I can survive, but you guys will see what I do. Uh, so pressing play, I'm going first, set three pass. Ooh, really strong opening for the Ulti Guys player. He draws it to another Ash. I don't Ash Reasoning. Why do you not Ash Reasoning? Because you don't know what you're playing. You don't Ash Terraforming or Reasoning because you need to see what you're playing first. Then you Ash one of their Archetype specific cards that gets them there. I'm telling you guys this because this is what you need to do. It's the smart thing. Uh, so he hits Nibiru off Reasoning. Now he lets me know he plays Nib. He normals Ogier. Like, he has combo for sure. He summons Fire Flint. Um... I feel like, I don't know how I feel about this. I think Barflint's something better to save for in case something happens I sold, you have a better extender so you could keep going. I don't know. Like, because I'm pretty sure this says it sends send one Fire Warrior. Yeah, any Fire Warrior. So I feel like he could send, um, there's one of them that summons from the grave. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, it summons from the grave, though. Like, he should send the one that summons from the grave and then use this as a one card into I sold and if something happens I sold then you summon fire flint lady but I don't know this this ain't my deck so I'm just like that's why I feel like I, I do take all the damage because it's not game I'm not getting OTK I'm taking damage yes strike hurts a little bit more but you guys I need to survive I have to survive I need my crackdown to stay there so he goes um I sold and then he resolves I sold so now, as you guys see, I'm letting him play Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I want to resolve Nibiru on him. And guess what? What's this called? Project Ignis Edelpro? Project Ignis Edelpro did not let me use my Nibiru. Which is sad. Very sad. Uh, this is glitchy to me. Because he definitely was supposed to get Nibiru. I was not able to resolve Nibiru, you guys. Oh, you know what's funny? I think I still won this duel, too. So I draw a loss win. I set it and pass. This is so funny. This shows, like, all you guys are actually kind of fire. Like, the fact that I still won this duel is kind of fire. So, uh, he's gonna go into battle phase, which is a smart thing to do. Oh, no, he doesn't. Oh, why would you do that? No, you have game on board. This is what I'm talking about. This is where you play into Torrential. Like, this is what I'm talking about. When you have game on... Pete, stop being so flashy. People need to stop being so flashy. You, ha I have game on board already. Like, you do not resolve I sold yet. Like, I don't know. I just feel like... You're playing into Torrential, but okay, fine. He gets out something that forces out one of my interrupts. Uh, you know why I lost win? This is why I lost win him, because this is what happens. If he targets Protocol, it's fine, but if he targets Strike or Crackdown, it's not fine, because Strike or Crackdown are what keep me alive. Like they live, because this is where if he gets greedy and summons access code, I flip Strike and he loses more. So this, even though it's a uh, like a kind of like a 25% chance whether he hits the right car I can't play when to that risk because if I lose the only cards that keep me in the game even if he snipes it wrong so now I have a guaranteed way to keep these versus letting this resolve so you guys might think oh you're bad three stacks for loss winning the, the Renault no I have to because if he hits if he hits crackdown I lose like I lose I have to keep crackdown because crackdown is going to make sure that I don't get OTK so that's why I'm, I'm living on a prayer right now so I have to loss win him and that's sad that I had no choice he goes battle phase so obviously I'm gonna crack down Nibiru, which I ha that's like that was the idea. I'm like if he doesn't do anything, you know, crack down the biggest monster, so I take no damage. I keep strike in case he flips into um into like any big links, and I have protocol in case I draw into um personal spoofing. So I set lost win because he summoned help. Do I ash it? No, because I have Nibiru also. I think the game's gonna nope. So I strike in the I strike the um access code. Did the game let- Oh, he didn't play into Nibiru, that's why. So I, I'm still sitting on Nibiru. Guess what? I drew Faker! It's game! It wasn't even supposed to, This game did not look like I was gonna win it. But yeah, Ultra Guys got the W. Hi. Watch this. Faker! He scoops! Ah. You know why? Because he probably knows how Ultra Guys work, dude. He, like, look at his hand. He has, like, one starter. He has Phantasmate. That's not gonna do him any justice. Yes, Papa. I think I guys. Yes, okay. So, like, look, Faker into Seek, go into Hexia, normal Mario, bro, and I have Protocol already up, plus Lost Wind that he knows about, and a Nib and an Ash that, like, I've been sitting up. You guys saw how many plays he did that I could have Ash Blossomed? I did it because, like, I need to draw an Ultra Guys monster, so I don't use my hand traps to stop him from playing. I use my hand traps to stop him from going for game. That's where what I did was smart, and it got me game. Um, so...
Infernoble Knight game two. Pause. Um, I drew a good hand actually. This hand's good, but it's it's not that great if he SDKs or hand loops me. So he got to hand loop me. So like my hand was not good be for the simple fact that he's like hand looping me. The reason why my hand's good if he just puts up negates is because like I can flip protocol on his turn and I have Manny for seek. So it's a good hand. But because he handloops me, it's not that good. And he's gonna handloop me. You guys are gonna see. Like he's doing his Infernal Bull Knight combo. Oh my goodness. Yes, Kingston. Honestly, why he combos up? I'm just gonna kiss my baby. I'm waiting for his turn to be over. <laughs> like, I can't really explain this too much because I'm not proficient with um Infernal Bull Knights. I can't really Commentate on this to an extent all I can do is say what he's doing But if I say what he's doing you guys see what he's doing me me saying it and you sing it I can only commentate on what I know So do I feel like this is a correct play? I can't say if it's correct or incorrect because I don't know his deck to an extent Of course what he did with I sold was like it correct But like well, no, no, no one thing that maybe is not correct is resolving the effect of I sold if he did do that so if you want to play around Gamma, you don't use her effect on Summon. If you want to play around Ogre, you don't use her effect on Summon. That's one thing I guess I could commentate on. Everything else is like, I feel like he's doing correct. And obviously he did it correct because he hand looped me, so he didn't make any mistakes. Come here, my fatty baby. Mm -hmm. Get that, that kiss. He's comboing me, you guys. I'm getting hand looped. He takes my extravagance from me. He draws a card. Oh, man. Of course you take extravagance. That's the best card in my hand right now. Uh, I think he, oh yeah, he puts up Savage Arclight, and I think he's gonna rip one more card out of my hand. Hold on, fatty man. This is super beast, though. Inferno Knights are so crazy. In face, take up my hand. I'll put the Charles, Charles pop, and then take. Dang. Uh, so like I'm living on a prayer. Um, so why I didn't scoop is because I feel like if he doesn't negate the correct cards, I still have a chance. So what I want to do is try to flip protocol first because he has to negate it. Otherwise, he can't respond to manifestation. And summon Seek. So at least that way, like, Seek will search a follow-up if I don't get LTK. So I don't scoop. He already knows what I'm playing. So scooping for information is pointless. So I don't scoop just in case I can get game. That's the kind of player I am. Unless I know for sure there's nothing I can do, I don't scoop. The only time I'll scoop like that is if I'm playing it to the timer. But there's no timer online. You just play it to your heart's extent. Uh, so he's going to go Charles. Take the driver out of my hand. Which is, is smart in case I have Nibiru. That was so smart. Like, who cares if you have negates? Just take it. Take it out of my hand. Put me in the most simplified game state as possible. So everything he's doing is crap. My baby's squeezing my neck. He doesn't negate protocol. Oh, but guess what? He didn't read protocol. So he chains Arclight to Manny and it doesn't work because of protocol. So I'm still making plays with my two cards. And then I summon uh, Silk. In attack, there's no choice. And uh, he tries to negate. So, um, I changed Silk because, um, wait, oh, no, 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 I wasn't supposed, no, 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 that's correct, because he pop, he kills my monster either way, so I just changed protocol regardless, um, but this card right here, one of them pre prevents destruction, so, like, this is where you're supposed to read cards to see if this gets destroyed, but either way, this is what happens, if I don't negate, Meliseek dies, right, if I do negate, Meliseek goes, so no matter what, Meliseek goes bye-bye, so I have to just try to resolve Melisee. I wish Protocol protected anywhere on the field and grave. He's savage. Now I know for sure his game because look, 4,000, 4,050, that's over 8,000. And I'm already at 75. So game three, I think game three, I, I waxed him. So let me see. Um, yes, fatty baby. Uh, so let's go to game three. This is going to have to be my last one because um, I got to. Yes, yes. Uh, I got to uh, spend some time with my son. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's already like over an hour okay, in. Okay. So he opened evenly, but I did side in judgment, which will like, of course you side judgment going first because people will side back row hate against you. That's the main purpose of judgment. That's also why I don't main deck it because I feel like it's way stronger going first. So you only want to play it when you know you're going first. If you play it in your main, it's win more if you go first. But if you lose the dice roll, it's going to be dead more often than not, unless you play a slow deck that can't kill you in one turn. And if you play a slow deck that can't kill you in one turn, you never needed judgment in the first place. So in my opinion, unless we're in a format where people main Lightning Storm and Evely, you're not supposed to main judgment. That's just me, though, because it's just like it's only for going first. But every, as you guys can see, every trap that I play can be used even going second. So stop, King.
activate extravagance like if he ashes it's fine i have access to faker i drew another faker and then um so as you guys can see i crack down at haunted rock he, he evenly is i judgment on resolution i go uh oh no i don't go faker yet yes i'm glad i didn't i want to hold faker because my other idea is to just keep Keep two warriors from hitting the field. I do that with Crackdown and Siliquitas. So if he can't summon Ice Hold, he loses anyways. Because he'll only have one warrior on field. Haunter Rock is just, it's there. Uh, so pressing play, he does lose really hard to this. Chalice, he goes for the one that targets, uh, targets back rolls. Then he targets my uh, Haunter Rock, it goes bye bye. If he chains Crackdown, I just crack down this. Then I crack down on his only warrior. And on resolution, I was just going to go um, Faker into Meliseek and it's game over. Because even if I don't OTK him, he can't keep up now. So that was actually a pretty easy game three. It wasn't even that hard. I didn't even resolve Faker any scoop. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys. I do have duels against Megaliths. Um, like you guys can see more guys duel if you actually do. I feel like some people think about this deck the same way they think about True Draco. Some people just don't like this deck. They just don't. And it's fine, but I like this deck. So, thank you guys so much for watching this. God bless you guys. Uh, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Jesus. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Please give us this day our daily bread, Lord, and please forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the power forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, you guys. Peace out, yo. Um, definitely be looking forward to some more uploads, though, in the future. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave your commentary. That's a firework going off outside. Feel free to leave your um, your comments. You know, I'll read them. Sometimes I don't reply because, like, I just read when it's late at night. Or, you know, sometimes I just forget to reply, but I do read them. Always keep in mind. I try to heart them all so you guys see that, um, you know, that I read them. But trust and believe I do read your comments. Peace out, you guys.